Everyone remembers this game, right? Minesweeper is an old computer game where a player makes guesses on a board to reveal information about neighboring tiles and then use that information to narrow down the search for targets, mines. We can also use a similar pen and paper technique to find gold when we're out panning. Logs and tables are kind of boring, so let's draw a picture instead and use that to find more gold. So what I'm going to show here is a very helpful and easy to make visual representation that will assist in making you some more money when you're out high banking or mining. You don't need to be a geologist or an artist to do this. All you need is a pen, paper, and a gold pan with a shovel. A classifier is pretty helpful too. All we're going to do is go out, take test pans of gold, get a rough count, and take some notes, and then move on. Flower gold deposits are pretty finicky. The grades can increase or drop off in the space of a few inches in any direction. Sometimes the pay streaks are really consistent though and go right in a straight line. Other times they follow the flow of the river and concentrate in low pressure zones. Doing a lot of test pans is important and doing a test every six feet or about two meters or so will save you a lot of heartache over time. It's true you can run a lot more material with a high banker by skipping exploration, but it takes a lot of time and effort to set up, and I wouldn't do this unless you already have outlined a zone by test panning. It's far easier to map and test pan first, rather than start slaving away and end up exhausted and working for a buck an hour only to discover you missed some really good gold nearby and wasted all your time and energy. So, test thoroughly before you start mining. Before we start, here's a few things to keep in mind. Panning gives an indication of what's on the surface and within a very small area around the panned zone. This creates a mostly two-dimensional drawing of the deposit at surface. Mineral deposits are 3D items, so you'll rarely know what a deposit actually looks like just by panning the top. As you produce and then do more test pans or drilling or sampling in the workings as you go down, then you can establish the shape, grade, and size of a deposit. It doesn't matter whether it's big or small, the exploration principles are the same. Another thing to consider is estimation. The best way to estimate gold in a pan is to learn to count the dollar value, or estimate the percentage of a gram and convert that into cubic yards, meters, or tons. But these are difficult things to teach right, off the, right out of the gate, and come with experience, so the easiest way to do this for a novice is to simply do a spec count and then make some minor notes of any anomalies. I care mainly about whether an area is economic to high bank or set up a wash plant, not specific counts of gold down to the cent. My rule of thumb for flower gold is anything above, say, 250 dots is some pretty nice material. If you can pan it all to the lip of the gold pan and it looks like a decent slice of a gram, then that's also an excellent indicator that the area is economic to shovel or process with a larger wash plant. So that's a long way of saying that there's a huge difference between 10 big chunky pieces of gold in a pan and 300 tiny little microscopic dots of flower gold, even if the gold quantity is identical. You may want to classify material or run it with more or less water flow or angle for optimal recovery based on the type of specific material that you're in. This information will help you operate more like a real mining company. They usually sort ore and have different processes for different ore types and grades. And they know from previous drilling experience what grades they're bringing from each area and what rock types they are. So you can do the same thing and it will improve your recovery. So for example, if you discover an area with flower gold and clay, you can work that area with an appropriate setup using more water and more effort to wash and crush the clay in the hopper, while perhaps using less slope or flow for the fine gold recovery than you would for standard gravel. All right, so we're gonna play a game here quick. Okay. So this is saying that there's one mine nearby. Three is showing that there's, this is touching three mines. This is touching one mine. So you know there's one here. This is only touching one mine. So we know that this is not a mine. 
This is touching three. One, two, three. This is touching one, so that makes sense. And this is touching three. And this one here is touching one. So that means there's nothing here. And over on this side, we can see that this is one. This is touching two. And this is touching three. So all three of these are likely to be mines. And over here we can see that this is touching one, one, one. So one of these is likely a mine. This is saying that two of these three are mines. This is saying that one of these two are mines. Or potentially both, I guess. Two, and so one and one. All of these are saying there's one mine touching, so this is likely a mine. This would be a two if there was a mine here, so this is a safe zone. And this is saying it's touching two, so one, two. And then this is touching two, one, there for certain. This is touching two, but it would be a three if this was a mine, so this is safe. I hope you can see just why this resembles a little bit of an exploration thing. You're using the data you discover, even if it's a zero, to discover where the objective is, in this case mines, in prospecting a gold streak. Alright, so I'm going to redraw some of these new form or real formations. So you have an inside bend of a river. And this is the river and it's flowing this way. Alright, so say you pan here. Zero specks of gold. It's still information. And then you pan up here, you get 10. Okay. What's going on here? Is it getting more gold down here? Maybe. 20. Okay, and then you pan here, you get 50. Interesting. And then you pan here, you get 100. Things are looking good. You pan here, you get 50. Uh oh. You pan here, you get 20. Then you pan here, you get 50. Okay, you pan here, you get 50. You pan here, you get 100. You pan here, you get 200. You pan here, we get 100. Next to a zero, so that's really unique. There's something going on here, so you need to do more test pans and figure things out. See, so pan here, you get 200. Pan over here, 300. Okay, we're on to something here. There's something going on in this general vicinity. See, so pan here, you get 300. Pan here, you get 200. You pan here, you get 200. You pan here, you get 150. But as you start to go here, you can start to kind of, as you do more, as you do more test pans, you gain more information about the surroundings. So that, say you pan up here and you get a 300 or something, a really good pan. Something that's basically economic. If you're machine mining or you're mining by hand or you're just panning, those are some good numbers. Even at really small specks of flower gold. So right here, say it's 250. This is 150 and 100. So then if we had to guess, what's most likely to be next to this number? It's still a guess, but you actually fill on a pan. You do a pan and say this is 500. We can now make a much better guess of what's in between these pans. It's probably, statistically, an average of these two numbers, so it's probably 400 in between here. 
and even if you pan it and it's only 375 or 450 or whatever it's still statistically very close to these and we're basically just grading it in a range so this is really this is good this is really good and this kind of stuff is is getting there it's worthwhile if you have to say mine some of this to get to the 300s great and then as we're filling this in here you can do more pan and say this is a you do just go out here and you get a random pan here of a thousand awesome you've now discovered something something's going on there and statistically there'll be a halo around this even if you pan here this is 500 500 750 a thousand 500 And so you can see how it's, it kind of becomes like Minesweeper as you can kind of guess what in, is in between these cells. And as you fill in more information, like say this is a, a 50 here, you know that this is going to drop off dramatically and whatever halo of this zone is going to be around this area. And you know that there's probably going to be a block that's about 250 or 300 here, something like that. And if you pan it out, you're probably going to get very similar numbers here. And then as you're doing, say, real pans here, these numbers just sort of fill in. You fill in the blanks, and then you connect the golden dots, and suddenly you can draw, I need to mine this. Or we can take the best slice here and mine this, this shape or whatever. And then as you produce this, and you go down a foot, then you redo these test pans so that you're continually getting accurate numbers. And this is why mining companies, they drill, and they're getting these core intercepts and trying to figure out the grades of certain things, and that's what they're doing, drawing these deposits out in 3D to find something worthwhile to produce. But around these deposits are probably low-grade stuff, and they're just mining the cream of the crop down the center. Okay, here we draw a real gold mining distribution we've done in previous years here. So this is the inside of a low pressure zone. Water source is flowing up north. And this is basically a beach kind of thing you can find in many different areas. So we found that Started off here, we got about 200 specs. Then we found that it dropped off as it was going north. And then it also dropped off as it was going back into these areas that are kind of higher up in elevation relative to the river. Flowing like that. So we found this nice little ridge area here where we did another couple pans. It was consistent of 200, 175, 150. And it dropped off. But right here in this kind of deeper wedge as we went back later in the year when the water was lower we now had access to lower ground and it followed the same kind of patterns here where it's clearly pointing we had some other stuff here right on the edge 250 300 it's clearly pointing that there's some good stuff kind of in this area here worth coming back and sure enough when we got there when it was lower we're finding stuff like a thousand K, 1K, 1.5K, 500, 500, and 
And what's interesting is because many of these river systems were new, once you do this a couple of times, you can use the information from previous years on the new years, or say a year 10 years from now. These distributions are not all the same. It does change year by year, especially if there's big flood events or something. But in general, these kind of distributions will stay somewhat consistent. And this is the kind of stuff that, if you sold your claim, you could pass off a map like this, and it's worth a lot of money. Like you can save people tens of thousands of dollars of time if you can pass off something like this and put them immediately on the gold like that. You've added value to your claim. Okay, and then so as we filled this out, it becomes a lot easier to guess again. Like, I never panned here, but you can probably say there's say about 150 specks of gold or something like that. Probably about the same here. Uh, did some pans over here, like 25, 25, 25, 10, 25. And if you're just a hobbyist trying to have fun, even these 25s, it's still some little dots in the pan. It can be fun, but you're just you can't really make money at that. That's why you need to look for more numbers like this. And if you get to the point where there's so many dots in the pan that you can't even count them, that's a good sign too. That's like these. This is the kind of stuff where you can make an ounce in a day if you run a few yards of material. These are very high gram per ton numbers that are economic pretty much anywhere, especially if they're at the surface like that. Anyway, I think you get the point. Connect the dots.